So did we truly find life on Venus? Not yet, but that is something I would like to discuss with you today. So you probably heard about Venus. It's a planet in our solar system, closer to the Sun. A planet which has roughly the same size as our own planet Earth. In the 19th century, astronomers were convinced that Venus was a twin sister of our planet. They were convinced that the, the planet has continents, clouds, and maybe a civilization. Camille Flammarion, a famous French astronomer, published in 1884 a book called Les Terres du Ciel, and there is an entire chapter on civilization on Venus. Basically, Camille Flammarion thought that because the planet was identical to Earth from far away, it would be possible that we, there will be some kind of civilization, intelligence, advanced civilization on Venus, living in a tropical climate. I have the book here and I show you some of the picture that he has inside the book to illustrate his idea on this civilization. Well, in the 50s, we quickly realized that this view was completely wrong. Venus is more the hellish sister of Earth. He has a very dense atmosphere, so at the surface of the planet, the pressure is 100 times the pressure that you have on Earth. The atmosphere is made of carbon dioxide, so you have a very strong greenhouse effect. So the temperature of the surface reach, reach values which are close to 500 degrees Celsius, so 900 Fahrenheit. So you can melt some of the metals on the surface of Venus. And it's, there is also in the top of the atmosphere clouds of uh, uh, sulfuric acid. So it may be raining acids on the surface. So the probe Venera 9 and 10 landed on the surface of Venus. And they revealed that in fact the planet was barren, dark surface, looking like the surface of a volcano on Earth without any tropical forest like Camille Flammarion was dreaming about. But, and that's very interesting for us, several space probes visiting the planet. They reveal some interesting features, such as, for instance, 50 kilometers above the surface, the presence of an area with the temperature and the pressure adequate to have liquid water. They also reveal the presence of a mysterious UV absorber, which seems to be distributed all around the planet and has not yet been identified. Those interesting measurements and observations motivated researchers such as Carl Sagan in 1967 and more recently David Grisbone to publish papers on the habitability of Venus pointing out that this area of the atmosphere could host some kind of life. Those, of course, are only speculations. But so today, September 14, 2020, a group of researchers led by Jean Greaves from Cardiff University published a very interesting paper in Nature Astronomy. They announced the detection of a biomarker in the atmosphere of Venus. So I am not going to go through the details of what they detected, but they detected a molecule called phosphine. Phosphine is known to be a molecule that cannot be produced by geological activity on terrestrial planets. So this detection implied the existence of a biological activity on Venus. The first detection was made using the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, which is in Hawaii, it's a radio telescope in June 2017. The team tried to confirm, of course, the existence, this detection, using the, a new telescope called ALMA, which is located in Chile, is the large Atacama Millimeter Array, which has a better sensitivity. And the detection was done in March 20, 2019. Both instruments confirmed the detection of the atmospheric line of phosphine, and both give the location of this line. And both suggested that these molecules come from the 
upper cloud layers that I mentioned previously, which is temperate and could have liquid water. So we did not find life on Venus, but the presence of a biosignature, a gas that is not, which is not supposed to exist on the planet in its atmosphere. So what can we say about the life itself? Well, this kind of life will be very different than the one we have on Earth. We are not talking about dinosaurs, monkeys, or butterflies here. We are talking about microorganisms which live floating in the clouds. Interestingly, we have this kind of life on Earth. It's called an aerial biosphere. But it's not stable simply because this life ends up flowing, floating back on Earth. In the case of Venus, because Venus has a complete uh, cloud coverage, it's possible that this life is in fact stable over a very long period of time, allowing this life to thrive and to, to multiply. However, there is probably some kind of cycle here. Um, paper has been published over the past 10 years on the cycle of life for this kind of uh, biosphere on Venus, where basically um, those microbes developed and thrive in the temperate area, and they then slowly fall due to the gravity and reaching area which are extremely hot and dry. So those papers suggest those microbes become spores over a long period of time, but then are sent back to the upper deck because of what we call gravity, gravity waves. When they reach this, this temperate area again, they wake up and they start developing again. There is a lot of questions we want to uh, answer, of course, about this, uh, this life, such as how it survived this dry phase, how it survived this extreme acidic environment. Is that, uh, are they similar to the extremophile we found on Earth in the acidic lake, for instance? How do they live without water? For such a long period of time. But we are not there yet. We have not seen them again. We have seen a, an indication that they could exist. That's what we call a biomarker, a biosignature. So this is an amazing discovery, I think, because it suddenly opened the gate into a lot of new speculation on life on other planets. But we need to really find this life now. We need to study it to understand how this life exists and has been sustainable on this planet for such a long amount of time and where it's coming from. Because this life could come from Venus as it could have come, be coming from Earth, for instance, by contamination. So this is a great discovery because it will also uh, restart the exploration of Venus using uh, space satellites. Uh, space Agency has been launching um, space missions uh, to Venus for a long period of time. The last one was Akatsuki, uh, which is still in orbit around Venus, launched by the JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. Uh, NASA has selected a mission called Veritas. It's gonna be, it could be the next mission to explore Venus. And fortunately, Veritas is focusing mostly on the surface of the planet. So we could modify Veritas. Now we know there is maybe life in the atmosphere of Venus. So the mission will be able to probe and analyze this area. We could, for instance, have an instrument that will deploy in the atmosphere, a balloon, that will uh, look for additional biosignatures, or maybe get a sample and take a picture using a microscope and show for the first time the presence of a Venusian microbe. It's not much, it will be just a microbe, but that will be a significant discovery because we will have found life elsewhere in our solar system. So thank you very much for your time. And please, if you have any questions or comments, write them down at the bottom of this uh, video. Uh, join us on social media. Follow the discussion. Thank you again. Bye bye.